Hi everyone, today I'm going over how to do overhang support for any cubic photon. All right, so I imported this model here. It's a little more complex. I wanna make sure I didn't pick something that was really easy, kind of defeats the purpose. All right, now that I have a mess mixer here, go to analysis, overhangs. Okay, so it usually does FDM um, supports automatically, FDM being uh, for plastic. Obviously we're doing resins, a lot smaller, it's a different type of support. So my custom settings are already saved here, but I got that by going to SLA slash DLP printer. Once you click on that, you will have these two drop down menus. So I kind of ignore these first three up here. I'm sure they matter and there's a way to optimize them. Feel free to read about it. For me, I haven't touched them. I've had no problem getting awesome support. It's really easy to remove. My max angle is 45, density, that's like um, pretty much how many supports I have. So if I have 100% density, it's extremely dense. I don't want that. So 30% is fine. And then layer height, 0 0.05. That's the normal quality that I print in. Post diameter of one and tip diameter 0.3, base diameter two. So I usually have the base diameter being bigger than the post. Give a little more stability because you definitely don't want your supports to fail. Otherwise it's gonna defeat the whole point of having a support. Um, for context, this model from the base here to the top is about 45 millimeters. So that's really gonna affect how big your supports are. I'm not gonna want five millimeter supports, that's ridiculous. So one is plenty, 0.3 is very small. The tip diameter is very important because that's what's actually connecting to whatever you're supporting here. So if it's really big, you're probably gonna snip it off and snip off a big part of your part or your model and you don't want that. Um, let's see, down here, the only thing in advanced supports that I really recommend you understand is solid minimum offset. Now the solid being your model. And it's extremely important that this is somewhat high because otherwise your supports are going to lay on your model and in order to clip it off, you're gonna have to sand it off, it's just gonna be a huge mess. So I enjoy having it pretty high. 0.25 millimeters. I think the, the normal is only like 0.01, which is ridiculous and probably isn't gonna do what you need. All right, have my preset, generate supports, and we'll see how well it does in the first time. It looks pretty good, all considering. This is a really complicated model. I modeled this last year, it took me forever. So many arms. Anyway, so I'm gonna check through and make sure that it's supporting what I want it to. So first thing I'm gonna do is check all the swords. This looks pretty good. Um, the Photon does a really good job with supports, or not supports, but overhangs in general. It's printed a lot of things that I could have never done on a FDM without supports. I'm gonna add one here. All right, perfect example. So this is what I wanted to happen. So see how this looks absolutely ridiculous? You don't want that to happen. So you click on it, you click on it, and nothing happens. I am sure you guys have all experienced this. It's really frustrating because that works fine. Oh, neat. But that's not what you want. You want to support this piece, right? So supporting models is kind of like a puzzle sometimes. You just need to make it work. So be creative with it. So with Mesh Mixer, if you hold down the shift button and then draw it, it will hold whatever you do no matter what. Even if it does something ridiculous like this. Now if it's ridiculous, you can keep holding shift and just keep building up this dumb looking support until you get something that works. It's not the best way to do it, I understand, but it does work. <laughs> um, small note, in order to remove these supports, I've been holding control and clicking. Sorry I didn't mention that earlier. You don't always hit control Z, you go back to where you were. So yeah, I hope that helps you guys a little bit understand when it, it does not work and you really need it to, because that's obviously not gonna print. You can hold shift, and then draw whatever you need and it will force it to happen. It might, you might keep getting ridiculous things, you gotta play with it. Another tip for getting it to work when it doesn't want to is changing your post diameter. So if I change this to 0.5, it's gonna be a little more precise. So see how it's skinnier? That's gonna make it easier for you. So I'm not sure what's up with the black here. I've exported those before and they're completely fine. I'm not sure why it's doing that. I wouldn't be worried about it, but if you were worried about it, just draw another support. That one looks much better. I can get rid of the other one. Boom, looks fantastic. Small recap, make sure to always generate automatic support, save you a lot of time, and then go through and make sure all your supports need are there. If it is not placing a support, despite how times that you were clicking, shift and then drag. All right, the rest of the model looks pretty darn good. Before I wrap up, just a small comment about orientation. Um, in this case, the most important part of the model, like most models, is the front. 
and there's not very many supports on the front, which is good. So there's not going to be a lot of sanding needed or a little pock marks for moving supports. So I'm happy with this orientation. Now, let's say if I had a bunch of these spikes all over the front, in that case, I'd probably orient this about 45 degrees back in this whole back area be a lot heavier supported. So it's a trade-off. It's going to look amazing on the front and there'll be no support marks. You're probably going to see a lot of little marks in the back. So really, whenever you have a model, just get creative and try and think of a way that's going to best represent your model. So what I do is once I have this, I export it. I already have one. Sword monster. Yes. And then once it's done exporting, I open it at any cubic photon. I've noticed that some people haven't had a problem with um, printing directly on their build plate. For me, I cannot get it off without like extreme brute force and breaking these little models. So I actually use the little supports in any cubic photon. I love them. They peel right off and it's just really nice. These are my settings for green any cubic resin, in case you were wondering. 0 0.05, 10, 1, 60, and 5. So I click on my model, click on supports. We're going to do light supports. Minimum length of 4 or 5. I have it like that because otherwise they compress. And then you have this little plate on the bottom of your model, they have to peel off, and it just it defeats the purpose because you can peel off the build plate, but it's terrible to get the little raft away from the bottom of the model. Gonna let that auto support here. Two hours later. All right, now that it is supported, the bottom of this looks great. I know it's gonna peel off really easy. If it was a bigger model, I would not do light supports. I would do medium. If it's a huge model, heavy, kind of get the point. All right, once I have this, back to this, and then I'd slice it and then I'd place it on my USB drive, which is somewhere in here. Awesome, if you have any questions, let me know. I know that adding supports can be really frustrating, and I wish you the best of luck. Happy printing.